And God said, Let the water teem with living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the vault of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea, and every living thing with which the water teems, and that moves about in it, according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds, the livestock, the creatures that move along the ground, and the wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so. We're going to talk about the moon jellyfish today. Its name has the word fish in it, but it's far from looking or acting like other fish. It's a part of a group of animals called nadarians. It's an odd word because the sea at the beginning is actually silent. They are called this because of a special cell called the nidocytes that these animals have, which they use to help them catch food to eat. There are many different animals that look and act very similar to the moon jellyfish, about 9,000 of them, but all of them live in water. This species of jellyfish is found in every ocean around the world. It wants to be in ocean water that is close to land with mild water temperatures. So when you're swimming in the ocean, odds are you are also swimming with this jellyfish. It also means that it doesn't like to be found in very cold waters. So that means the Arctic and the Antarctica, it's not likely to be there. A <laughs> good thing too, because they would probably just turn into jelly sickles. I ran into this jellyfish while snorkeling in the Atlantic Ocean off of the Florida Keys. The squishy body of the jellyfish looks like it doesn't have many parts, but there are actually. The main part of the jellyfish is called the bell. This is where all of the key organs are, but there are some key things that these animals do not have. They don't have bones. They don't have brains, and they have no heart. Makes you wonder how they really survive, but they do, and they do it well. There, at the edge of the bell, those are its tentacles, and we will talk about these later. From the inside of the bell, there are some arms called oral arms that reach far away from the body of the jellyfish, and it uses these to help catch the food it wants to eat. And there's a muscle at the end of the bell around the ring, that is called the bell ring. That muscle, that helps the jellyfish look like it's flapping the wings as it opens and closes its body. The tentacles of the jellyfish are where the danger is. Those long wire looking things that extend off the bell, they contain a special cell called the nidocyte. And we talked about that earlier. When these special cells come into contact with something, they explode and release a toxin, which is kind of like a poison. For the moon jellyfish, the toxin is not so strong that it would actually hurt a human. But for little things that it wants to eat, it can cause the prey to become paralyzed, which means it doesn't move anymore. These tentacles then help the moon jellyfish collect the things it wants to eat, like the small shrimp-like things called plankton. The bell arms that we also talked about earlier then help pull that paralyzed prey into the body of the jellyfish so it can actually eat it. Another key part of the jellyfish is called the gonad. Such a silly word, it's kind of funny to say gonad. It's those bright rings that you see in the center of the bell. This type of jellyfish typically has four of them, but the one you see here actually has five. So it's a bit of a mutation, which just means it's something that's not supposed to be there, but has changed in this particular animal. These organs are how the jellyfish reproduced into more jellyfish. One pair of jellyfish can make thousands of more jellyfish. That is a lot of babies to take care of. Because jellyfish are not really fish, they don't have fins to help them move around. So jellyfish don't move very fast, but the little it does move is done very efficiently, which means it does it very well without a lot of waste. One way jellyfish move is to just drift with the ocean current. The ocean water moves with a current just like the air moves with wind. 
But this isn't the only way that they can move. By opening and closing that bell we talked about earlier and using the muscle called the bell ring, the jellyfish can push themselves around. They get two bursts of speed every time they open and close the bell. The first one when the bell quickly closes, forcing the water away from the jellyfish, and the second when the bell opens back up and it acts like a sail for the moving water behind the jellyfish that just pushes the jellyfish right along. One of the easiest ways to find a jellyfish is actually just to walk along the beach. Since jellyfish like to live close to the shore and can't move very quick, they are frequently washed up under the beach because of the waves moving the water onto the beach and the ocean tide that is causing the water to go in and out and get shallower during a certain part of the day. But once on the beach and out of the water, they can't survive very long. One scientist found that it was about 45 minutes that it could survive. It's because they're made up of 90% water and so being out of the water, they dry up pretty fast. Also, they breathe oxygen from water. They can't get it from the air like we do. So they just don't survive very long when they're washed up on the beach. Jellyfish are a pretty neat creature that can do some cool things with their dome-shaped body and their exploding tentacles. So the next time you see a jellyfish washed up on the beach, you can now know a little bit more about it.